Well, welcome everybody again to the Insights site. Steve here. And today I've got some more interesting verses here from my Insights book, the new one that's coming out. Estus Insights. Should be out in a few weeks' time. Some verses out of this book are very interesting because they show what the Earth is really like. It is not, as we have been told, solid. Neither is it flat, by the way, except maybe the poles a little bit, but it's hollow. And I'll just give you some examples from the Bible and from my new book, Esther's Insights. But I'll start off here from my book, Esther's Insights. This is in chapter 4, verse 22, 23 or 2nd Estrus, the original apocrypha book of 2nd Estrus, which used to be in the King James Version of the Bible till 1885, and it was then taken out, which I think was a big mistake. And it says here, and there's an angel talking to the prophet Ezra, and he answered me, and he said, Go and ask a woman who is with child, if when her nine months have been completed, her womb can keep the child within her any longer. Very interesting, it starts with that example of a woman and a womb, because look what the next verse says. And I said, no, Lord, he cannot. And he said to me, in Hades, the chambers of the souls are like the womb. For just like a woman who is in travail makes haste to escape the pangs of birth, so also do these places hasten to give back those things which are committed to them from the beginning? Then the things that you desire to see will be disclosed to you. And here's a verse, fantastic verse here from Enoch, book of Enoch 22, 2 and 3. And it was in it, talking about the earth, four hollow places, deep and wide, very smooth. How smooth are the hollow places? and deep and dark to look at. And these hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here. Revelation twenty thirteen, And death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Comment 9. Contrary to what is common, much more likely that our earth is actually hollow. In above verse 23, God himself compares the earth to a womb. A womb is by definition hollow, so that something can grow inside it, such as a baby. Also, the advantages of hollow objects is that they can contain other things, and thus a hollow earth could also contain hell and the lake of fire, and also an inner world of beings and peoples, actually believe it or not, prior to 1950, most people did believe the earth was in fact hollow and certainly not solid. A solid object is actually very hard to keep spinning, whilst a hollow object in a vacuum of space could spin indefinitely. If the earth had a molten core, the liquids and solids and its momentum inside the earth would very quickly cause the earth to stop spinning, slow down and stop because the contra momentum, one direction against the other. God likes to be saving of space, and thus he created both the earth, the planets, and all the stars as hollow. Very practical thing for God to do. Think of the centrifuge on a washing machine. Initially one puts clothes into the center of the washing machine, but they don't stay there. Once the washing machine really starts to spin, then all the clothes get thrown to the edges, and thus it was with the original creation of the earth. As it began to spin, the hollow earth developed. Yes, another example of that, like I've said in my video, is if you've ever done pottery, take some clay and put it on a spinning disc, and with your hands holding the clay, then the clay gets moved outwards with the spinning wheel, and you end up with something that's hollow and has holes in the top and bottom. And I think that's exactly how the earth is. Yes. 
Okay. Now we're going to go over here. There's another amazing verse. It's the next chapter. Chapter 5, verse 30. Or second Esdras. Or my new book, Esdras Insights. So this chapter 5, verse 30. And he said to me, Even so have I given the womb of the earth. What is a womb by definition? It's hollow. So you can put water inside it and a baby. And the placenta, of course. He said to me, Even so have I given the womb of the earth to those who from time to time are sown in it. For as an infant does not bring forth, and a woman who has become old does not bring forth any longer, so have I organized the world which I created. Comment 14. Womb of the earth. Here clearly God is telling us that the earth is hollow and like a womb. Wow. This amazing book to have, I'll tell you, it's just an amazing book to have this second Esdras. Just it has amazing information in it. So many incredible verses in it that are well worth the time to meditate upon. All right, now I'm going to take you over to the book of Job and show you some incredible verses here. So in Job 38, when God comes to talk to Job, after he suffered terribly, by the way, he brings up some strange topics. He says here, for example, Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? Well, if you think like I do, that the earth is hollow, and if you think like the ancient Hebrews that Garden of Eden was created inside a hollow earth. And that there wasn't enough water or oceans on the planet before the flood. According to the Book of Enoch and Second Esther itself, they talk about only one seventh of the earth had oceans on it or water, the rest was land. Uh, started inside the earth. And there are strong indications of this because it said He's going to go to a very far away land. You can read that in my, in my insights books. And God sent Noah very far away to the outer surface of the earth. And that took some time. But for that to happen, there had to come the great flood in order to bring enough water to wash them out from the inside of the earth to the outside of the earth. And that's the exact description given here in the book of Job. Or who shut up the sea with doors? when it break forth as if it issued out of the womb. I think that's talking the exact moment of the flood. When the flood waters came, <clears throat> Noah got in his boat, and started sailing, and came out one of the entrances, probably the southern entrance, the south pole as they call it. It's not really a pole because there's a big hole there. Nobody's ever found the poles, none of the explorers, because there is no pole there. Just a sudden entrance inside the earth. So I think at the time of the flood, Noah came forth with his boat and sailed out of one of those holes. So this description fits it absolutely perfectly. Who shut up the sea with doors. That's right. When it break forth as it issued out of the womb. And that verse is incredible. Fantastic. Very revealing. There's another one like it too. And here's also another very revealing verse. That was, um, that was uh, Job 38, 8. And this one is Job 38, 29. Out of whose womb came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven? Who hath gathered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. That's very, very interesting because those who have gone to the North Pole say that you find the Earth just keeps descending and you lose sight of the horizon, you actually lose sight of the sun. This is what people like Admiral Byrd and others have been there and other explorers. And they say then you get to what is called the ice barrier. 
In other words, as you descend inside the earth, you can neither see the sun on the outside, neither can you see the inner sun. And there's such a place on the descent inside the earth as the waters start to go through the opening, then they go on the underside of the earth because the gravity is in the centre of the crust of the earth, not in the centre of the earth. And there they find there's a huge, massive ice barrier, hundreds and hundreds of feet high, massive ice barrier. And I think that's what makes this verse make sense. The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Incredible. Now here's some more incredible verses from my new book, Hesdus Insights. This is in chapter 6, verse 1. And he said unto me, at the beginning of the circle of the earth. Look at this. They knew the earth was round two and a half thousand years ago. It wasn't Columbus who discovered that. They knew that in the Bible. And he said unto me, at the beginning of the circle of the earth, before the portals of the world were in place. What are these portals it's talking about? And the book of Enoch says the same thing. It talks about portals. And before the assembled winds blew, before the rumblings of the thunder sounded, before the flashes of lightning shone, before the foundations of paradise were laid, before the beautiful flowers were seen, before the powers of movement were established, and before the innumerable hosts of angels were gathered together, before the heights of the air were lifted up, before the measures of the firmaments were named, before the footstool of Zion was established, before the present years were reckoned. For the imaginations of those who now sin were estranged. For those who store up treasures of faith were sealed. So comment two. Portals of the world were in place. What portals might it be talking about? In the book of Enoch it talks a lot about portals. Today, people talk about portals as gateways to other dimensions and places. Well, they're not far off in their deductions. As the portals mentioned in the book of Enoch, the oldest known book given to Enoch by God himself around 5,300 years ago, were also sometimes gateways to other places. Portals was also a word which when one reads about does initially sound quite mysterious. Things described in the book of Enoch as coming through portals. It's not something that we ourselves can openly observe today. Well, since I wrote this, that has changed. Now, portals have opened up both in the sky and on the land, it's been seen by people in different countries and by the military. It's been reported about portals. It's becoming more common. As I stated in my book, Enoch Insights, is my belief that the portals are gateways from the spirit world to the physical world. Furthermore, the physical world in which we live is surrounded by much bigger dimensions, both higher and lower dimensions, which in fact control everything that happens in our dimension, except choice. Well, that's just a few verses. All right, so here's verse 16. And this is, I'll get this right here. Yeah, it's from chapter 7 of my book, Estus Insights. Chapter 7, verse 16. Then the pit of torment shall appear, and opposite shall be the place of rest, and the furnace of hell shall be disclosed, and opposite the paradise of delight. And then the Most High will say to the nations that are raised from the dead, Look now, understand whom you have denied, whom you have not served. Talk about Jesus whose commandments you have despised. Of course, Jesus talked about the story of Lazarus and the rich man. We all know that story. I know of one Christian writer, this comment 18, who described paradise and hell exactly as this verse portrays, and that both are inside the earth, and he personally visited those domains on a spirit trip, Interest enough, he was surprised to see the inner sun down in hell. Yes, yeah, that book is called Journey to Gragor. Very, very interesting book to know about hell and the inner world, inner sun and the domains below our feet. 
Well, verse 17. Look on this side and on that. Here are delight and rest. Here are fire and torments. Thus he will speak to them on the day of judgment, a day that has no sun or moon or stars or cloud or thunder or lightning or wind or water, air or darkness or evening or morning or summer or spring or heat or winter or frost or cold or hail or rain or dew or noon or night or dawn or shining or brightness or light but only the splendor, the glory of the Most High by which all shall see what has been determined for them. Revelation 20.12 I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books according to their works. Revelation 20, 15. And whosoever were not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, well, there's a taste again of my new book. As to insights on the topic of the hollow earth, showing from this book and from the book of Job, book of Enoch, where it talks about the earth being hollow. And those are just a few verses about the earth being hollow, and also talked about portals as well. Well, thanks for listening. I do encourage people to get my insights books, and the new one, As to insights with the S, will come out in a few weeks' time sometime in August, and Asterisk with an S, Insights, the size of my first attempt to make it. This is like a new edition, but it's got a lot more in it. And the new Asterisk Insights with an S, which is a Greek spelling, rather than like the prophet Ezra, whose name in, in Hebrew was with a Z. So that's why my f first attempt to make the book, I used a Z, because of Ezra's name, but now the new edition is as it should be with an S, Ezra's Insights. Difference being that the new book contains both the Apocrypha books of first Ezra's and second Ezra's, plus a synopsis 4,000 years of biblical history from creation to Christ, which I've written and, and I've um, put together myself. So that means that the book is now about 350 pages long, the new edition, as opposed to only 150 pages long with the first edition when it first came out in 2018 with Esdras Insights, which was with a Z. For the new book, we have a new cover, as you've already seen. New cover, fantastic cover that my daughter Sue has just written and made. So I hope you'll get the new book when it comes out in a few weeks' time, Esdras Insights. And I now have eight Insights books. They're all based on Apocrypha books, starting with Enoch Insights. Then it was Astro Insights with a Z. Then it was Jubilee's Insights, book one and two. And then, no, sorry, it was Jash Insights, book one and two. Then Jubilee's Insights. And then it was Eden Insights, lost books out of me. And then it was a testament of the 12 patriarchs about six months ago. And now this one, as to insights with the with the S. And apart from that, I too have two paranormal books called Out the Bottom's Pit books. No, it just says Out the Bottom's Pit and Out the Bottom's Pit Two or Book Two, which can make contain amazing amount of information on what's going on, on this planet and what the military and governments are up to, what they do behind our backs, and all kinds of stuff. And also there's a lot of testimonies of people like myself and others give testimony about many paranormal things. Paranormal to me does not mean something, oh, something scary and something horrible. No, it just means outside the normal. That's what paranormal means. Something not what you'd normally expect to see or hear, but happens to people all over the world, whether it's UFOs, as I've seen, or with Men in Black, which I've also seen and many other phenomena like that. It'd be great to hear from other people what they've experienced of the paranormal and the supernatural because in our own case, being missionaries many years and being many different countries, we have experienced a lot of strange things, both good and bad. 
whether it be seeing angels or whether it be seeing fallen angels or, or seeing strange creatures. I've seen a lot of things, including I've mentioned before, I've seen UFOs at least five times. And that's not an experience I like, by the way. It doesn't feel good. But all the paranormal things I've seen is not been by choice. It's just I'm there and it confronts itself. Some of the experiences have been pleasant, like when I've been in difficult circumstances, God's angels have showed up in one form or the other. That has happened also, and that's very comforting. That's mostly been when I've been very ill or something. But I know I'm not the only one. I know there's lots of other people who have experiences. Mostly people don't write it down. My daughter's one of them. But it's good if you can get it out. Tell others, write it down, because everybody has something. Everybody's got some experience, and maybe they're not telling anybody, maybe they're afraid to. But if you have some experiences of, of seeing something that's out of the ordinary, then I'd like to know about it. Feel free to write to me. Maybe I'll talk about it. Maybe I'll testify about it. You can always write to me at Stephen with a ph dot strut at btinternet.com and I'll do my best to tell others about what you've seen and noticed. I think what everybody should realize is these kind of paranormal experiences, portals in the sky, portals in the desert, all kinds of paranormal experiences, they're going to increase. Why are they increasing? Because we're having a dimensional shift. We're having where the spirit world is merging more and more all the time with the physical realm, as it used to be. Yes, that's how it used to be until Adam and Eve messed up the, the whole universe, basically. And God separated out the dimensions of the spirit world from the physical. But well, there wasn't like that in the beginning. They used to be merged together, as it will be in the future. Well, that's another story to talk about. I want to thank everybody for listening. Please do get my books. And I think you'll find a lot of very useful information there. A lot of inspiring information as well. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.